for the old winds to change I hear the spirit say it's time It's time for the dead man to rise It's time for the great light to shine I hear the spirit say it's time Fling wide you heavenly gates Let the king of glory in Let the King of Glory in, come right in on your people's praise. Let the King of Glory in, let the King of Glory in. It's time for the sleeper to wake. It's time for the old winds to change. I hear the spirit say it's time. It's time for the dead man to rise. It's time for the great light to shine. I hear the spirit say it's time bring wide you heavenly gates let the king of glory in let the king of glory in come right in on your people pray Let the King of Glory in, let the King of Glory in, fling wide you heavenly gates. Let the King of Glory in, let the King of Glory in, come right in on your people's praise. Let the King of Glory in. Let the King of Glory in. Open up the windows, let the light in. Open up the windows, let the light in. Open up the windows, let the light in. Let the light in. Let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in, let the light in, let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in, let the light in, let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in, let the light in, let the light in. Fling wide you heavenly gates. Let the King of Glory in. Let the King of Glory in. Come right in on your people's prayer. Let the King of Glory in. Let the King of Glory in. Hallelujah. We're going to open up our windows. Hey, open up the windows. Let the light in. Open up the windows. Let the light in. Open up the windows. Let the light in. Let the light in. Let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in, open up the windows. 
Let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in, let the light in, let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in, let the light in, let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in. Let the light in, let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in, open up the windows. Let the light in, let the light in, let the light in. Fling wide you, heavenly gate. Let the King of glory in, let the King of glory in. Let the King of Glory in, come right in, on your people's pray. Let the King of Glory in, let the King of Glory in, let the King, let the King of Glory in, let the King of Glory in, let the King of Glory in, let the King of Glory in. be seated. Hallelujah. 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 Church, when you hear certain words and you want things to be opened up to you, you can't wait to be pushed into the presence. You have to walk into the presence. And sometimes we get so used to reclining and sitting back till we don't get forward and aggressive when we need something from God, our own selves. And nobody needs to cheerlead you into the presence of God. That's something you should just automatically, as a result of grateful hearts, I'm up and I'm in. I'm up and I'm in. This is why I came today. I'm up and I'm in. Nobody has to tell me to move. I'm up and I'm in. Because I want things to open up for me. So when I'm moving to his presence, I'm saying, Lord, I'm here and I'm available for your openness. Are, are you listening to me? So we need you to wake up and respond. Wake up and respond. It's your life, it's your victory, it's your overcoming. You're the one that needs to break through. So all over this room, I want some grateful hearts. To exhort the Lord today. Come on. If you're listening to us out in, in media land, we need grateful hearts. You're ready to worship at the drop of a hat. You're ready to get up and say, God, I recognize you and I honor you and I praise you and I, I love you. Open up to me. Open up to me. So the King of glory can come in. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We thank you because you are the new and living way. You provided an open way for us to get to you, and we thank you, and we bless you today, God. We don't back down on what you've called us to do. You tell us, enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise to bless your name. And so we enter in, and we stand in your presence. 
and we praise you. We thank you for obedient hearts that hear the voice of the shepherd. And God, we bless you today. Bless us. Open us up. Open us up. Open us up. Open us up. God, we need to receive of you today. We need to receive of you today. We need to receive of you today. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. If, if you're joining us on social media, we just moved in a little different way today. We thank God for you. We bless God for you. Thank God for your viewership. Thank God for you sharing in this time with us. And we thank God for your contributions and what you send and what you say that help us along this way. And we thank you. And so the greatest blessing that we can impart is the word of God to you. The greatest blessing we can impart in this house is the word of God. And we don't do it stingily. We we want it to be a lavish gift that comes to the people of God. What thus says the Lord. Because God has something to say. Just in case you might not know it, he hasn't stopped talking. He's still telling us stuff. Amen. So Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And they all said, Amen. Amen. I want to talk from the subject, new wine skins. New wine skins. And I thank the team because that last song just tapped me right on into where I needed to be. And so I'm saying to the musicians at the end of this service, I'm going to double back to that song. New wine skins. If you will, quickly in your Bible, turn to Matthew 9, 16, and 17. New wine skin. New wine skin. Everybody say that. New wine skin. Here is the reading. And Jesus said to them, no one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. For the patch pulls away from the garment and the tear is made worse. Nor do they put new wine into old wineskins or else the wineskins break. The wine is spilled and the wine skins are ruined, but they put new wine, everybody say new wine, new wine. into new wine skins and both are preserved. Both are preserved. That one verse said a lot of stuff. Said a lot of stuff. And we're going to explain it. Sometimes we, as a way of introduction, I wanted to say, we say this quite often about many things. It won't fit. It won't fit. And be it a jacket, a dress, A pair of pants, shoes. I'm not the only one that ever said it won't fit. <laughs> Sometimes.
sometimes we even late for church trying to make stuff fit. that don't fit anymore. Or you've lost weight and it's too big, you don't want to look like sad sack coming to church. It won't fit. Amen. I, I, you all looking at me as if I'm the only one that's ever said that. Many times God is nudging us to something else when something's, when things don't fit. When things don't fit, we can apply that to relationship, we can apply that to job situation, we can apply that to stuff we're trying to get to work and it don't fit. Maybe God is nudging you to something new that will fit. But the problem is, is the, is the distress and anxiety of something new. We want new, but we're afraid of new. How many afraid of new? A new venture. I've purchased three houses. And each time at the closing for that particular house, it scared me to death. Because first thing they did was pass me a stack of papers. And I felt as if I was signing my life away. I said, I can get a car at the credit union by just calling. But not so for that mortgage. Anybody know I'm talking right about mortgages? And you go and you sign so many times and they said, this is that paper. You don't even really have time to read it. You just trusted that, 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 that you, you, you're not giving, giving them. <laughs> are, are, are you out there? Do you understand what I'm saying? It's, it's as if it, you, you're scared. You want the new house. But the nervousness, especially if they tell you that the mortgage is, 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 is I, I, I've never done a 15 year, it's 30 year. And I start counting. <laughs> How old will I be in 30 years? On the first house, it didn't look so bad. The second one, it was a little worse. And the third one, I said, I might be saying bye to the house early. <laughs> Does anybody understand what I'm saying? So newness frightens you. A new job frightens you. Because you got to learn something. Will I be able to handle it? A new preaching assignment frightens me. Oh, Lord Jesus. And I've got some preachers in the house. Tell, tell, they obey pastor, but they nervous. I'll come to them and I said, I want you to. If I say, run to McDonald's, they, they sigh of relief. But if I say, I want you to preach on such and such. Oh, Pastor, I. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's somebody else's turn. And you start counting who was the last three people up. <laughs> you start going through. Now, I know my turn didn't come around that fast. But they're delightfully obedient. But the nerve. So newness bothers you. It bothers you. But you won't new. How many won't new? You won't new. You won't new. Amen. But let me jump in with this. It said, nor did they put new wine into old wineskins or else the wineskins break. 
Let me dispel a myth about wine in scripture. People thought that, that they had non-alcoholic wine. It was not. What Jesus turned, when he turned water into wine, it had alcohol in it. It was the real deal. It was important. But he said, don't be given to much wine. That means until you out of your head like Noah. <laughs> Noah got drunk. Amen. So where did we get the notion that's non-scriptural, that wine is not fermented, it's not grape juice that's been fermented and turned to alcohol or, or wine. Grape juice and wine are two different things. But you already know that, don't you? It's because a company by the name of Welch's decided they needed to sell grape juice because they weren't in the wine business. So they perpetuated the myth that, that wine, the, the grape juice is what you ought to be drinking and that wine is not, not, not authorized in scripture and stuff. A company. But it's not scriptural. See, we have to tell the truth. Now, am I, am I advocating for you going out getting you a gallon or something? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, but we need to know the truth of what the scripture says. Amen. But, but, but in that day, this is what they did. With wine. They had wine skins from the goat or sheep skin. They sewed them together real tight so that they, 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 they had a way of binding them so tight till they were, they, nothing could, could escape out of it. And they would take new, new grape juice, freshly squeezed grape juice. And put it in those skins and seal it up real tight. And after a while, the fermentation process, which is a gas releasing exchange, was started operating with the, the grape juice on the inside of, of this leather container. And this leather container, because it was new, and the grape juice would new, they both started expanding. The, the gases would push out as the fermentation process moved in and it started to stretch the wine skin. And it did that until the wine process, making process was over. And after a period of time, what was grape juice poured out as as wine. But the skin had been stretched. Well, in this illustration, Jesus says it's a no no to take an old wine skin and put new wine in it because the old cannot handle the expansion of the new grape juice. It will stretch it and destroy it. So today I'm going to talk about the importance of newness because we keep trying to retrofit old stuff into new. Even in our walks with the Lord, we keep trying to make old stuff new or mix them together and it don't work. It don't work. It keeps splitting the skin. Because the new is energetic. And the old is done. Are you out there? I'm not saying if you're an old person, you're done. I want, somebody said, thank you, Pastor. 
I want you, you to be encouraged. Amen. Amen. With this illustration, Jesus came to tell them, I, 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 I did not come to repair or reform the old institution of Judaism, which is what the Jews thought the Messiah was coming to do. Instead, he came to institute a new covenant relationship and the new covenant doesn't just improve the old, it replaces it. It replaces it and goes beyond what the old was capable of. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Is it possible that Jesus is trying to get some of the religious isms out of you? through forbidding you to add the new to the old as it cannot tolerate the stretch. Some stuff got to get out of you. Some stuff you must stop doing because they tied to the old. And as long as you, you toss between two worlds, you being pulled, you're doing like this. And so what, what happens on the inside, in the middle, is that you're stagnant and you're not going forward and you're not going backward. You're just staying in place. And anything that stays in place starts withering on the vine. Starts withering right there. You don't get better, you get worse. Wow. Sometimes the old cannot tolerate the new. Why? I need to explain it. Why? Because contained in the new is new energy. Effervescence. Strength. The newness is powerful. As with the old wineskin, when it was new, it could handle new grape juice and the fermentation process. God is all about the power of new. Write that down. He's all about the power of new. And when he tells you about old stuff... It's to reference how powerful it was when it was new. Did you get that? Remember the old pathways because when it was new. Remember your first love because you were just on a high when you first fell in love with God. It was You didn't have much information, but you had just freshly got saved. You were just crazy with it. You could, all you really knew was that God is good to me. You didn't have a bunch of scripture to relate. You said, I don't know. I just feel different. God, good to me. You want to hide. He said, remember how newness feels, how powerful that is. That's powerful. Anybody remember how you were as a new Christian, how that was to be new? What that felt like? Some of y'all didn't even raise your hand. Maybe you never felt it. I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 you, you're still feeling old or sideways or something. I don't know what it is. But I'm going to give you a scripture. If you say you saved, you have to say you knew too. You must say that. Isaiah 43 and 19. And it says this. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. When is it going to spring forth? Now. How many of you need it to spring forth? Now. Right now. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? It's a rhetorical question. When new comes, will you know it? It's just like what Pastor did at the beginning of the message. When the presence came in, did you know? You were still sitting. I didn't know whether you knew, but I was going to help you know. 
Because that's my job as a shepherd. They help. Hey, it's in the room. If you lift your hand, you might tap into it. If, oh, there it is. <laughs> if you wave a little bit, you might feel. So, hey, there it is. It's, it's here right now. <laughs> Sometimes I just need to help you. It's not in your sitting. It's not in your knees. It's not in your where you sit. It's what you move into. Because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a believer that if you are a swimmer, you're not a swimmer until you get into the water. <laughs> you got to get off the, off the beach. You got to get off the side of the pool. Do you swim? I'm a swimmer. Have you ever been in the water? No, but I'm a swimmer. No, you're not until you get into the water. Are you in the presence? You're not in it until you move into it. Did he open the gates for you to come in? Yeah, but did you walk in? Because really, he's not going to push you in. And some of us are content at standing at the door peeping in. Rather than walking in a new way that he has provided. Sometimes we don't get the blessings that we, we should have because we're peeping at them instead of grabbing them. Not a, not a bogus stuff, we'll grab that right away. I think sometimes we have to learn to know what's good. I thought I knew good food because I had eaten one type all the time. And then I started experiencing something else, little by little, and things expanded. Amen? Cause, and it expanded for some of you all. I don't know why I picked up this rabbit trail, but it expanded for some of y'all. Let me name some of the stuff y'all eating now. That you, There was a time you didn't eat. You didn't know nothing about swarmers. Now, you may not eat it, but some of y'all do. Put your hand down. Put your hand down. Put your hand down. <laughs> let, let me help you. All I have to do is talk about your childhood diet and what you eat now. Some of you remember the first time you ate a shrimp. I remember when I introduced my daughter to crab legs. And she couldn't do nothing but read the menu upside down. And I gave her a taste of mine. And here's the menu. It's upside down. And she ordered, I want some crabby legs. I said, <laughs> and every time we went to that blue lobster place, She had to get crabby legs. Well, I would start crying because I had to break them all open while my food got cold. Because she, she got introduced to crabby legs. Do you understand what I'm saying? I could name a bunch of other stuff that y'all like that you, you know. Some of you like sushi. What is that other chickpea? You like hummus? And you just found out that there was pita bread at replacing cornbread. <laughs> oh, come on, I'm going to help you today. New. Maybe God wants to do something new with you. 
The new things will mean new understanding and dismantling of long-held beliefs. That's what new means, dismantling some things. So you can walk it out differently. New means a constant unfolding of spiritual revelation for the believer. You can't live your life not having an unfolding in it as a Christian. Unfolding revelation. Even when I talk, even if I preach on a, a subject you heard before, you ought to hear something new, brand new in it. My God. How many hear something new today? Unfolding revelation. And how do I know that, that, that Ephesians 1, 15 through 18? Ephesians 1, 15 through 18. And I've talked too much. I got to get going. Talk my food. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. That you may know. Get new stuff. I think in your hope is revelation. As God moves you forward, you continue to be hopeful because you see new hope. Hope leads to hope. Oh, I see a way out. How many of you have been going through something and you got a little glimmer that, uh oh, we can work this out here. And, and, and God sends you through and you work it out. Come on, I'm, I'm talking, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. When you are saved, receiving Christ, God does not patch you up. He makes you new. That's why to say you save. And you don't stop doing anything. Or if you start doing it again or have a problem, if you confess your sin, he is faithful to forgive you of your sin and cleanse you from all the right. That's for believers. But he really made you new. He didn't rehab your old stuff. Y'all watching too much HGTV. <laughs> he didn't rehab you. He made you new. Why? Because the scripture says. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a, a old creature. A new creation. It says, old things have passed away. And look at this. Behold. Some things. Have what? Have what? Become what? So why are you hanging out with the old stuff? If he made you new. Woo. You hear old song and slide backwards. Why? Because new purpose has to have new vessels. New purpose has to have new vessels. New purpose has to have new vessels. A dreadful teaching has spread throughout the evangelical Christianity that you can become converted to Christ and never change. This carnal Christian idea is impossible. It is blasphemy. It is firmly against the teaching of Christ and against the New Testament. 
When you are born again by the Holy Spirit, you are a changed person. If you're not a changed person, your conversion experience is false. You fake. That's why you keep acting up, because you fake. <laughs> I'm sorry, that slipped out. That, that should have been a bubble. You a phony. You can't be born of the Holy Spirit and not be changed. It's impossible. The sanctification that comes after being born again takes a whole lifetime and into the glory. Uh, 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 but change begins immediately. So it's an ever increasing, ever unfolding, changing process. You are transferring out stuff. It's like an es a elevator going in two directions, an escalator. One going down, one going up. Some dropping off and some coming on. But let's go back to this. But they put new wine into new wineskins and both are preserved. When Jesus said that, what Jesus said is that I'm forming a new institution, the church, which brings all the pieces together. The pieces that should be together with the ones that thought I was just coming for them, but I'm coming for the whole world and it becomes new. The church is Jesus' new creation with new creations in it. Ephesians 2, 14 through 16. Just to ratify that, that thinking. For he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity. Jesus in his flesh got rid of the division. Who can be, who can't be? All are in. He wants everybody in. That is the law of commandments contained in order so that as to create to himself one new man from the two. Thus making peace that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross. He said, I'm not dealing with two factions. I'm only dealing with one man that I'm reconciling. And I'm reconciling all of them back to God. I'm pulling them all together back to God. Somebody ought to say amen. Because you're part of the pullback. Jesus reminds us that the old is stagnant and often Cannot be renewed. And sometimes in churches. We have turned to old wineskins. Old. Down through the church age. Old wineskins. Because we refuse to accept the newness of what God is doing. Hmm. And each generation, he did something different while he's doing the same thing. Are y'all out there? As I come to a close, you are not patched up, set to, set to tear at the slightest pressure. You ain't a patch that don't match. So as soon as a little pressure comes, the patch is broken loose again. Up. Because God fixed it so. What was torn ain't even there anymore. If any man be in Christ. He is a complete. 
new creature. Turn to somebody and holler at them. You not a patch. He didn't patch you up. Thank you, Jesus. You love me so much you didn't get no used and uncon- reconditioned parts. You didn't even get an after factory part. Here is the final picture and the definite goal. And John said it, and he used my word in here so many times. He said, Revelation 21, 1 through 7, and it says, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven say, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. New creations. God himself will be with them and be their God and God will wipe every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no pain for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Come on. Do y'all see it? Do you know what the goal is? And he said, to show you how new you are, I'm going to wipe away all your tears. There'll be no more death. There'll be no more dying. Somebody holler new. New. And he said to me, write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. So, expand, stretch, grow. Stretch. Be powerful. Stretch. Transform. Stretch. Go through tribulation. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Move into the full measure of your newness. Put your hands up. Stretch. (laughs) Some of you in a stretch right now. (laughs) But stretch. Be transformed. Be renewed. Stretch. Get ready to accept your newness. Oh, that's a stretch. You can put them down. It's time. It's time for the sleeper to wake. That's what they saw. It's time for the old winds to change. God, I didn't know this was going to fit like this. I hear the Spirit say, it's time. It's time for the dead man to rise. It's time for the great light to shine.
I hear the Spirit say, it's time. Open up the window. Let the light in. Open up the window. Let the light in. Open up the window. Let the light in. Let the light in. Let the light in. in. Because it's time. It's time. It's time. Fling wide you heavenly gates. Let the king of glory in. Let the king of glory in. Come ride on your people's praise. Let the king of glory in. Let the king of glory in. It's time. Lift hands and worship. Come on, Lumen. Pastor.
Come on in, Jesus. Let the King of glory in. Let the King of glory in. Blessings to you today. Give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Find a good church. Dove Church 4660 Military. We love you today. Let the King of glory in. 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 Come on, somebody. Let the King of glory in. Let the King of glory in. Let the King of glory in. I bless you. You can be seated. Praise the Lord. To all of our viewers, we thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, which will take you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.